you've seen online any of these Radio Shack um, trucks being updated to hobby um, grade electronics, one of the most significant upgrades there is the steering. To go from a non-proportional to a fully proportional steering system just gives you so much more control um, and so I think it's really important and I've actually not been able to find anyone explain how they've done it other than they just say oh, a normal servo drops in where the old steering unit was. So I'm quickly going to show you what I've done. Here's an 18 gram size servo, so it's smaller than a standard servo, just to show you the size comparison. That's a standard one tenth servo, so it's quite a bit smaller. Um, the reason I'm going with the smaller servo is because uh, I don't think you need 10 kilos of torque to uh, steer that truck, um, and I don't want that big current draw because the battery is only going to be small. This is the uh, servo saver uh, mechanism from the original truck and what I've seen a lot of people do is just whack on a servo horn there and just go, go at that point. But I think it's pretty important to keep that spring loaded servo saver in there. Not to save the servo, I don't give a crap about that, it costs five dollars. Um, but to save the rest of the steering um, mechanism in the truck. Um, so all I'm going to do is drill out the rear of this and screw it on all the way. I'm going to drill out a little bit small so it's a snug fit on those splines there. Um, yeah, so that's what I'm going to do. And for anyone playing at home, if you were wondering, the splines on this bad boy are 4.75 millimeters. So I'm going to drill this out with a four and a half millimeter drill bit, and hopefully that leaves it snug enough. Okay, so as you can see, I've got the Radio Shack Servo Saver unit mounted onto my $5 servo. I will give you one of my little tricks. I couldn't uh, drill a 4.5mm hole neatly into the back of that um, because it, the wall was so thin. So I've actually had to use a Dremel with a very tiny burr to just very gradually uh, ream my hole. So there we go, and the last question I have is, did I stuff up the servo by trying to jam that horn on there too hard? We're just going to use the radio system from my Lossy 22 to check that out. Looks pretty good to me. If you are using one of these cheap servos and a fairly high-end radio system like the Futaba 4P, what is it, 4PK? Um, make sure you tell the Futaba that you're using a cheap and nasty servo and not a high response brushless servo or your radio system will fry the servo. Next up, let's mount it in the truck. Okay, if you remember, the original steering unit came in this little case like that. Uh, and the reason that's significant is because that case just happens to fit perfectly in the truck. And why wouldn't I use that as a way of mounting my new uh, steering servo? Um, and then just eyeballing it, I can see that I need to mount the servo in this case as far forward as possible. And that's going to allow me to remove it when necessary, if necessary, as opposed to some of the jobs I've seen where they've basically just got their giant tenth scale servo on and just glued the shit out of it and got it in the truck like that. Which, let's be honest, it does the job, but it doesn't do the job the way I want it done. Okay, so without too much fuss, uh, a fair bit of dremeling and a few bits of extra heavy duty double sided tape there's our Radio Shack steering unit completely stripped out and reinstalled with a modern servo and the existing servo saver unit now this is a straight drop into the truck and if the servo ever fails it's a easy swap out 